Hi, this is the official podcast of the WCD. That's the World Congress of Dermatology, which will be held next in Singapore in 2023. I am Dr. Etienne Wang from the National Skin Centre of Singapore, and I will be a host for this podcast. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, and wherever else you get your podcasts. In this podcast, I speak with dermatologists and skin researchers from all over the world to talk about all things dermatology. This episode is the last episode of our second season, and I have Professor Roy Chan coming back in the second half of the show to talk about WCD preparation so far. But now, I'd like to introduce a new co-host, Lester, to the WCD podcast team. Lester is a final year resident here in Singapore, and he'll be giving us a derm topic for discussion this week. Welcome, Lester. Hi. Hi. Hi, Etienne. Very nice of you to invite me to speak on this platform. Okay, so what's on your mind about dermatology this week? Well, I think that in the recent years, I would say that there's a lot more emphasis on mental health associated with patients who suffer from skin diseases. And I would say that it's about the right time that we start paying attention to these small things that we don't usually do so in clinic. Yes, absolutely. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Well, I think that one of the most recent uh, papers that I've come across was actually the associated burden of mental health conditions in patients with alopecia areata. It was a population-based study in the UK that was published in the BJD not too long ago. And they compared patients who suffered from AA with matched controls and found that they had a much increased rate of getting depression, anxiety, and all that actually translated to more time off work and eventually even unemployment. So. Things like alopecia areata that we think are very much just diseases of cosmesis, it actually causes a lot of problems. Yes, and not only alopecia areata, any form of hair loss can cause a lot of psychological distress. And we don't have to talk about alopecia areata alone. Plenty of studies for psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, all the other inflammatory conditions that can also cause distress in patients. Definitely so. There was yet another paper on the Annals of Translational Medicine that actually uh, looked at hydrogenitis superativa and the psychiatric comorbids that these patients actually experienced. And they found that these patients had not only more rates of anxiety, depression, but it actually translated to increased rates of suicides, substance abuse, things that I wouldn't have thought of to be significant. And I guess All these papers have actually taught me to be a little bit more discerning, to look out for our patients' mental health, to in fact even just ask them the question, hey, how have you been coping? I think these are things that I've learned from all these papers. Yes, when we talk about mental health and skin diseases, there are two ways it can affect, right? One is that the skin disease is primary and it causes the mental health issues secondarily, or sometimes a primary mental health issue is made worse by having a skin condition. How do you think we can differentiate between these two? Well, I think the most important thing is to recognize that at this point in time, we're still not sure which came first, the psychiatric disease or the skin dermatoses. So in our context, I would say that for any patient who seems to complain of a particular disease that we ourselves may sometimes perceive may not be of a big deal, don't brush off their their concerns, actually find out how much it affects their lifestyle. And one of the recommended methods that was uh, suggested in a paper on JAMA dermatology was to actually consider asking a simple patient health questionnaire, which involves only two questions. The first question being that of uh, over two weeks, uh, does the patient find himself or herself having little interest or pleasure in doing the things that he or she usually likes? And over two weeks, did they feel down or depressed or hopeless? And this questionnaire can actually give us a very immediate way of screening for patients who actually potentially might be depressed, who don't show it. And I I wanted to just share the last point on this very interesting research, and that they found that patients with anxiety and depression, even in the absence of dermatoses, they seem to have an elevated or rather um, hyperactive DH17 pathway. And this pathway should be something very familiar to us because it has been implicated in psoriasis and pathogenesis and the interleukin-17 has been a target that we use quite commonly in terms of blockade. So I wonder whether or not, you know, one day if our patients do have uh, mental disorders associated with skin disease, perhaps would the interleukin-17 inhibitors eventually become a form of treatment for these patients for their mental disorders. It's quite an interesting hypothesis. There's this whole field of psychoneuroimmunodermatology now, which I think if you Google, you'll find quite a number of papers. <laughs> so I think you're absolutely right. I think we have to treat the patient as a whole being, okay? And sometimes we need to take into account the mental health as well. And who knows? Yeah, maybe a TH17 biologic will actually help improve the mood of some of our very severe patients. 
Yes, indeed. So I'm looking forward to the day where we have trials that demonstrate that these IL-17 inhibitors not only help with the skin, but perhaps help with the patient's mental health. Then that way we can say that we're not only dermatologists, but we also become well-rounded physicians who take care of our patients in all aspects. Mm, yeah. I just want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier. You have this very simple to apply two-point questionnaire. If you do happen to pick out a uh, patient who is depressed or anxious or feel hopeless about their skin condition, what would the next step be? I think the realistic thing to do in clinic is to recognize the problem, share with the patient that that might be a problem, and refer the patient to a mental health specialist who might be able to help them out. Well, I can't say that we are experts at knowing what to do next when our patients get depressed and anxious. So perhaps uh, if a mental health specialist can help, it will be great while we fix the skin and someone else takes care of their mental health. Yeah, or an in-house kind of a mental health specialist. Sometimes we can even uh, refer to the social worker or maybe even a clinical psychologist who comes visiting once a month or something like that. That would be, that would be a huge boon to any centre. Definitely so. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Leslie. That was very interesting. Thank you again for joining the team and I hope to speak to you when Season 3 comes around. All right. Looking forward to your invite. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, Lessa. Bye-bye. And now I'd like to welcome back to the podcast, Professor Roy Chan, President of the 25th World Congress of Dermatology 2023. Welcome, Prof Chan, back to the podcast. Thank you. Uh, thanks for asking me back again, Etienne. Yes, I thought this would be a good time to ask you back to check in on how things are going with the Congress. How have preparations been so far? Um, I think all things considered, we're doing extremely well. Um, since the last I spoke with you on the podcast, we have settled a lot of things. We have confirmed several issues, the most important being that it will be a face-to-face meeting, in-person meeting. There's no change to the dates. The venue is going to be the same, a Suntec uh, International Convention and Exhibition Centre in Singapore. And uh, the planning for the various aspects of the conference, which include the scientific content as well as the uh, logistics and the, uh, and the social content, are uh, proceeding very well. Can you give us a taste of what's going to be on the menu for the scientific program? It's going to be a very, very deep uh, and broad scientific program, which will cover all aspects of dermatology. I'll start with the, with, with, the, with the top, which is 15, 15 keynote talks by the outstanding experts in the, uh, of their own area of expertise. Um, there'll be 15 of those. Uh, there'll be five distinguished speakers. Uh, distinguished speakers are traditionally uh, non-dermatologists, so they could be scientists or um, other uh, thinkers. Uh, so we have five distinguished speakers, and together they make up the plenary sessions. Then we come to the meat of the meeting, which is the symposia. And this year's symposia there will be uh, will cover sixty topics with and span over two hundred sessions. So each topic there are wow. several sessions. Of that, we cover almost every aspect of dermatology. Uh, and be very, um, as I said, deep as well as wide. In addition to that, there are other types of sessions we'll have. For the first, I'm going to introduce um, a debate style, Oxford style debate on controversial statements. So we have a speaker speaking for and one speaker against and a facilitator. And um, there'll be eight of these uh, topics. So it's, it's, I think it's going to be two a day uh, for the first four days. And then there are, um, in addition, it's going to be 24 courses. So these courses are meant for persons who may not be familiar, very familiar with the topic and want to have a thorough grounding um, you know, for, of, of, the, of the topic. And this, this, these range from surgery to histopathology to, uh, to a variety of other things. So we 24 of those courses. Most of them are half-day courses. There are a couple which are full-day courses. Uh, there will be a charge, a small nominal charge to these courses. Then there's also going to be expert forums. There are going to be uh, 18 expert forums. Expert forums are going to be, uh, as, as, as it, what it sounds like, they'll be run by a panel of experts who, will, um, who are going to have a lot more time to discuss in, uh, amongst themselves and also take field questions from the audience. Uh, and they will speak about newer things, updates, uh, more controversial aspects and so on. So there'll be 18 of those expert forums. Oh, that sounds very exciting. Are there any topics or any fields that are new to the Congress that we haven't seen in prior Congresses? Um, I think the, I mean, the dermatology recently has the interest and the focus has shifted towards the JAK-STAT inhibitors, the, the new treatment regimens, so AD, 
certainly alopecia areata, vitiligo, melanomas. I think they will take a uh, will feature very very highly in in this. Uh, but we have not at all uh, neglected important global global dermatology topics. And and being at the World Congress of Dermatology, we want to ensure that conditions which are affecting many of the less developed countries and less developed communities are not forgotten and are well covered. So that's not all. We also have the abstract-driven sessions, which leads me to, um, to the fact that our abstracts uh, are open for submission. So please send in your abstract ASAP. So we have abstract-driven sessions covering 40 topics. And these can be either, will eventually either end up as posters or as um, oral presentations. And I understand that the IRDS board just had a visit to Singapore. Can you tell us how that went? That went very well. We had there wasn't a board; it was just an executive committee. It was seven, uh, six of them, uh, plus the uh, senior staff of the IRDS, plus the uh, the Triumph Triumph Group International, which are our PCO professional conference organizers. It went, went very well. They visited the Suntec Convention Center as well as the Pan Pacific Hotel, which is the main HQ hotel. Uh, and I'm very pleased with the, with the facilities and, and what looks like going to be an extremely uh, well-run conference. They love the city. Um, you know, some of them have never been to Singapore, so they were quite mesmerized by what is, what's happening in, 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 in Singapore. Even during the COVID experience, uh, they were uh, completely impressed with Changi Airport, for example. I, I, it would be remiss for me to talk about the Singapore and regional sessions, which are going to be very important. They're going to occupy the first 45 minutes of every day. It's going to be five or six, six tracks. Uh, um, and and every, every morning, it's going to be six tracks. That means that there'll be one track per room. Uh, and it's going to feature various aspects of Singapore and uh, regional dermatology from subspecialties to um, working how uh, we work with uh, NSC and SRIS for the, from the point of view of, of, of translational research. Now we're going to have sessions for the League of ASEAN Dermatological Societies. We're going to have sessions for patient support groups and advocacy. And then uh, finally, other aspects of dermatology which have not been covered before, for example, value-driven care, migrant care dermatology, teledermatology, imaging, and so on. So very, very thorough. Um, and this is going to uh, focus on our regional colleagues and our local experts. Okay. And also, of course, there are many more conferences in from now until the Congress itself. What presence will the WCD committee have in the upcoming conferences? Well, there's not that much time left. It's barely a year and the face-to-face meetings are just recently opening up. Um, so we've recently come back from Silat. The next meeting is going to be the EADV in Milan in, uh, in, in September. Uh, there was going to be the Indonesian National Conference in Samarang in Java in, Ju- in September. There's going to be the uh, American Dermatological Association, which is going to be in Canada. That's going to be in October. Uh, there's going to be the World Skin Summit, which is organized by the ILDS. It's going to be in Lima, Peru. So we have a presence there. Going forward from the region, there's going to be uh, an Indochina meeting. Uh, sorry, the, the Indochina Derm meeting, which is going to be in Phnom Penh in early December. This, this is for the year. I think there's a couple of smaller ones. Next year, obviously, there's an AAD, which is going to be in, I think, March in uh, New Orleans. Um, there's going to be a very big Indian meeting, the IADDL meeting in Mumbai. So we will definitely have a presence there as well and so on and so forth. Uh, so we are very happy to be able to resume face-to-face promotions and meeting people again. Uh, we really need to get the message out. Mm, wow, yes. And I'd also like to remind everyone that registrations and abstract submissions are open and you can find this on our website at wcd2023singapore.org. And thank you so much, Prof Chan, for coming on the podcast again to tell us about how things are going. I think things seem to be on track for a very exciting conference. Very, thank you very much. Yeah, we hope so. Fingers crossed. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you for joining us on another episode of the official podcast of the WCD. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram at WCD Singapore, and check out the WCD website, wcd2023singapore.org for more updates and content on the WCD. At that website, you can find links to register for the WCD and submit your abstracts for next year's WCD. And until next time, stay safe and use sunblock.